In 1980, Rod Evans was approached by a management company known for its unethical practices, often operating in legal gray areas concerning trademarks and contracts. The company offered Evans the opportunity to perform again under the Deep Purple name, which he accepted. According to Nick Simper, the original bassist of Deep Purple, Evans even invited him to join this new Deep Purple lineup. Simper declined. Evans also claimed to have contacted former bandmates John Lord and Ian Pace. Both were not interested in participating. This fake Deep Purple, which included only Evans as a former original member, performed a number of shows in Canada, Mexico, and the United States. They played songs from the Evans era in Deep Purple, which were considered acceptable, as well as songs from the Ian Gillen and David Coverdale eras, which were heavily criticized and reinforced the impression that this fake Deep Purple lacked credibility. Some performances ended in riots, such as the concert in Toronto on August 12, 1980, where the audience threw chairs onto the stage. The band also discussed plans to release a new album under the Deep Purple name and even recorded six songs in Los Angeles, which angered John Lord, called the plan the biggest lie. Deep Purple Overseas Ltd. The company established in 1971 to protect the Deep Purple name from unauthorized exploitation successfully sued Evans and his management. They won damages of $672,000. As a result of this lawsuit, Rod Evans lost the rights to royalties from the Deep Purple albums of the Mark I era. Rod Evans has not appeared in public since the court case in 1980, making his whereabouts a mystery to fans of the early Deep Purple era. Since then, he has completely disappeared from the spotlight. In 2015, Deep Purple drummer Ian Pace expressed concern about Evans. If anyone knows where Rod is, or even if he is still on this planet, it would be good news. We haven't been in touch with him since the late 1970s. Nobody knows where he is, or even if he is still alive. There are no clues. However, in a 2015 interview, Captain Beyond drummer Bobby Caldwell provided a glimmer of information about Evan. Caldwell revealed that Evans was doing fine lately, had long been working in the field of respiratory therapy. In September 2017, Caldwell reiterated that Evans was doing fine and added that Evans, who was married to a fellow respiratory therapist, lived in Northern California and had no plans to return to the stage. Although Rod Evans was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of Deep Purple in 2016, he chose not to attend the ceremony, reinforcing his personal decision to stay away from the music world and public life. Rod Evans and Ian Pace were two of the original members of Deep Purple when the band was formed in Hertfordshire in 1968. According to Nick Simper, Deep Purple's founding bassist, Evans secured his position as the vocalist after competing with dozens of other singers who auditioned. Evans was eventually chosen for his creative idea to rearrange the Beatles' song Help into a ballad. This unique version of Help was later recorded for Deep Purple's debut album. Shades of Deep Purple. However, the most iconic song Evans sang with the band was the cover of Joe South's composition, Hush, which successfully reached number four on the Billboard Hot 100 in October 1968. Evans achieved further success on the U.S. charts with Neil Diamond's Kentucky Woman, recorded for Deep Purple's second album, reaching number 38. Both Hush and Kentucky Woman regained recognition after being featured in Quentin Tarantino's film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. After recording three studio albums and one non-album single titled Emeretta, Evans's journey with Deep Purple ended in the summer of 1969 during a U.S. tour. He was dismissed and replaced by Ian Gillen. This decision was made by Richie Blackmore, John Lord, and Ian Pace, who felt that Evans's pop vocal style did not fit with the direction Deep Purple was heading, which was leaning towards a heavier hard rock sound. Additionally, Evans's desire to move to the United States was a factor in his dismissal from the band. In 1971, he formed Captain Beyond, along with former Johnny Winter drummer Bobby Caldwell, former Iron Butterfly bassist Lee Dorman, and guitarist Larry Rhino Reinhardt, who was also part of the final incarnation of Iron Butterfly. Evans left Captain Beyond and the music business after two albums. He transitioned to academia, earned a medical degree, and began a completely different career, 
as the director of respiratory therapy at a hospital in California. He remained in this role until 1980, marking his transition from life under the spotlight to a quieter life in the field of healthcare.